So here is a video of me solving 30 Rubik's Cubes in one go. Except that I'm also blindfolded and I also lied. I only solved 29 out of the 30. But hey, still a national record, so not too bad. But more importantly, you're probably wondering how did I memorize so much information in so little time so accurately? And well, what's up guys? I'm Jack Kai and I am a three-time world record holder in solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded. And today, I want to teach you how to use the Memory Palace technique. So firstly, pick a place that you know really well, like your house, which is exactly what I did when doing those 30 cubes blindfolded. Secondly, pick a variety of locations along a certain route. And this is a bit harder to explain without an example, which is what I'm about to give you. Cool. So first of all, I might pick this doorway. So this could be location number one, because it's like the entrance. And then I might go around here so I can make the top of the shelf location number two. Let's make this closet here number three, this random chair four, um, the table where my PC and all that stuff number five. And then how about we make where the camera is, um, that one, number six, and maybe just this random passageway where I stored a bunch of random stuff because I'm too lazy to throw it in a closet, um, number seven. And you might have noticed that it forms a bit of like a circle around my room so it's easy to remember which one's location one, which one's location two, and so forth. Well, more like a deformed triangle, but you get what I mean. And I recommend just going through it a few times just to really internalize the locations, especially since I'm using my room as an example and you don't know my room as well as I do. But after you've done that, let's get to the next step, which is memorizing a list of words or a bit of information we want to encode pretty much. So say you have to memorize these words or some of them are multiple words, but you get what I mean. So firstly, I'd start at my door perhaps, and I'd imagine a bunch of Rubik's cubes like rumbling out, because my door is location number one, if you recall correctly. And then maybe out of that rubble of massive um, amount of Rubik's cubes, up comes a detective with magnifying glass, because that's what I imagine the stereotypical detective doing. And then he's inspecting a golden medal on his chest. So imagine all of that happening on my doorway over there. And on that shelf here, we have the house, so there's a house and it's maybe shaking a bit because um, the shelf's kind of shaky and there happened to be an earthquake earlier today in Melbourne, which is very rare. But besides the point, there's an earth, not an earthquake, a, an Eiffel Tower that just like emerges out and just like splits the house in two. I'm just being overly dramatic. And then over in my closet area, there is a circle that's just kind of rolling into the closet and then out comes this guy just walking backwards and the circle hits his butt because that's memorable. And just go through that again. So going back to the doorway, what do you remember? Yep, the Rubik's Cube pile coming out. What comes out, it's a detective. And what's he doing? He's looking at his medal. That's at location number one. Location number two, we have the house. It's shaking house on top of the shelf. Out comes the Eiffel Tower for some reason. There's some circle rolling towards the closet. And then it hits some dude who's walking backwards. And I could use more locations, but we'll stick to those for now. But what if you had to memorize, say, a hundred words? I reckon with a bunch more locations across a bunch more rooms, with, the, with enough training, you can definitely do that, as bizarre as it might sound to you. But how about something a bit more abstract? Say you were trying to memorize a script for an entire YouTube video, which is something I've actually done recently, so I'm just going to show that to you right now. So let's just go to the beginning where my objective is to hook the audience. So here, I basically bring up the whole idea of solving 30 Rubik's Cubes blindfolded, yada yada yada. That I sort of know quite well. I just have to remember that there's a bunch of Rubik's Cubes pretty much that I solved blindfolded. So how about I start at this first location and have a bunch of Rubik's Cubes just coming out. That sounds like a good start. And then the next part, I talk about a bunch of questions that the audience might pose. So, you know, how are you so accurate? How you memorize so much information? So a lot of questioning and stuff. And that's a bit abstract, that section. So I had to turn it into a more tangible image. So I just thought of a detective because detectives ask lots of questions to solve crimes and stuff. And then after that, what I wanted to do was sort of pose my authority to show you guys, hey, I know, kind of know what I'm doing and I'm a free time old record holder. So I was like, how can I encode that information? What if I just thought of like a medal? That would probably just prompt me to do that. Next bit is about using a place you're familiar with, like your house. The house is pretty easy to remember. Next part, I talk about um, having sort of locations or landmarks, as I sometimes call them, along a certain route. And so I just thought of the Eiffel Tower, very first landmark that came to mind. 
And then the next bit basically talks about pretty much what I'm talking about now. So I didn't really encode that at all, but I wanted to make sure I talked about how it sort of looked like a circle. And then I also wanted to talk about how you want to like maybe go back and rewind and then just go through and redo those again. So how could I encode that? That's kind of weird. Maybe I think of a guy walking backwards, but yeah, um, next in my locations, oh yeah, on that weird corridor thing, I have a palace. So this is the part where I wrap it up and talk about how this was just a brief introduction to using the memory palace technique. Outside of the palace on the ground, I see this thumb popping out and it's stabbing a big red button, which means that I have to tell you to hit the like button and the subscribe button and see you later.